The last type of reaction in Chapter 4 is making halogenated compounds directly from alkanes. So we don't have to start with alcohols. If we just have regular alkanes, those can be directly turned into alkyl halides. This does not involve an SN1 or SN2. It involves uh, another type of mechanism entirely. But it, again, is just an alternative to putting halogens in compounds. And it involves a substitution because we're replacing hydrogens with halogens. And even though halogens come two at a time, like Cl2, Vr2, uh, notice that only one of the two halogens ends up forming uh, a product, a, a bond to the carbon. The other halogen ends up bonded to the hydrogen that gets removed. And so if you add extra Cl2 or Br2, uh, you certainly can do further substitutions. In fact, you can replace all of the hydrogens in an alkane if you want, although generally we're only replacing them one at a time. And notice that in this kind of reaction, the fluoride is actually the most reactive. Uh, remember, HF was not reactive at all with alcohols, but F2 is super reactive. In fact, as it says here, it's dangerously reactive, and that's a reason for not using it. So once again, we don't see a lot of fluorides being made, at least not in this chapter. But chlorine and bromine are used. They are the cheapest of the uh, halogens, and um, they are, again, alternatives to what we've seen earlier in the chapter. Notice that the iodine, uh, HI, is the most reactive hydrogen halide, but I2 is the least reactive of the halogens when they are present as elements. So with any alkane, we're going to have a number of hydrogens to work with. You can take something like methane and substitute the hydrogens one at a time. And depending on how much chlorine you use, you can stop at any stage and go from just making uh, chloromethane to making tetrachloromethane. And all of these would be liquids that could be distilled at different temperatures in the cases where you might make some of all of these. And mixtures are common when you are reacting alkanes with, with, with uh, halogens. With alcohols, you generally get the corresponding halogen in place of where the OH group was. Uh, here there's more variety. Uh, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it gives you a mess that you have to sort out, uh, especially if you are trying to make one particular uh, chlorinated compound. Well, here's uh, the mechanism for this. It's not involving carbocations. It's uh, much different from what we saw earlier. And it involves creating what are called radicals. Radicals are what we call uh, molecules or individual atoms in which you have unpaired electrons. And when we start with something like Cl2, we get this reaction going by using either heat or ultraviolet light to break those chlorines apart. So you get two chlorine atoms with seven valence electrons, and that's a very reactive form of chlorine. And as you can see in step two, uh, that chlorine goes after a hydrogen that's originally part of something like methane, although this works with any alkane. And so we get an HCl molecule to form, and we create a radical. And like carbocations, radicals are very reactive and are going to want to do something else. Like carbocations, uh, radicals involve a violation of that octet rule. But uh, radicals, in this case, we don't have a positive charge on the carbon. It is neutral in that sense, but it's not obeying the octet rule. So that methyl radical is going to want to do something else, and one thing it can do is find another Cl2 molecule to react with, plucking away one of those chlorines along with an electron to make our product, chloromethane, and generating a new chlorine atom. And this chlorine atom that's a product in step three can go back to step two, find a new methane, and steps two and three just kind of keep rolling along and repeating in a, in a uh, chain reaction, as it's called. And so before long, we have made some quantity of chloromethane. And if we add extra chlorine or keep this going, we can eventually start replacing those other hydrogens as well. Well, it turns out that the kind of radical you get is going to determine your product mixtures, and we'll see that.